So osteoporosis, in terms of fracture protection, medications are absolutely necessary. Calcium and vitamin D are the mainstay of therapy, and that is what the placebo arm has used in many of the clinical trials. But even in the clinical trials, you see the number of fractures, so you need the anti-resorptive agent to reduce the fracture risk. As you look at the older population, however, falls become an issue. And so 30% of women fall in a given year of women over the age of 65. So you have to have an intervention which is non-pharmacologic, which is either physical therapy or Tai Chi, checking the vitamin D status, making sure that their vitamin D replete as ways of reducing fall risk. In addition, in some of the more senior, you're gonna do a home safety evaluation to make sure they don't have environmental hazards like low level lighting, cluttered hallways, throw rugs, things that can cause falls, that their stairways are well lit. So it's a, a number of interventions you're gonna implement in order to reduce falls and fractures. One of the biggest challenges is misinformation. Uh, much of the information that has gone to the media that has been aired in all the channels and all the newspapers has been the fear of anti-resorptive agents, the fear of osteonecrosis of the jaw. And that is a significant barrier when you speak to women, particularly women more than men, in terms of the fear that the agents are gonna cause side effects. And for them, the risk is almost commensurate with a benefit. No one has really sat down and looked at the numbers with them. And when we work with the American Society of Bone and Mineral Research on a paper on long-term safety of anti-resorptive agents of bisphosphonates, we looked at the risk of suffering a fracture, which in a lifetime is 50%. That's about the risk. And then the risk of a hip, that's a vertebral fracture. And then a hip fracture is about 15%. We compare that to the risk of suffering a car accident, which is like one in 10,000, and then the risk of suffering osteonecrosis of the jaw, which is like one in 60,000, so very small bar there. And then we looked at atypical femur fractures, and the risk of that was similar to the risk of being murdered. So we don't walk around thinking that we're gonna be murdered. And so that's what I would explain to patients as I would show them the bar chart. They would say, no one has ever explained that to me. So I feel that that is a significant issue. Because if you explain even to older patients, you know, the medicine will work very quickly and will be very effective reducing fracture risk. They understand that. Um, the, another issue that they raise is uh, if the insurance is going to cover it and then the number of medications they take. And for the second one, I mean, having the medications that you can administer every six months or once a year um, are really optimal for them because they already have a number of pills that they're taking that you don't want to add to their burden. So I think those are the, the biggest, the fear, the um, coverage, and then uh, polypharmacy are the biggest uh, barriers that they encounter. They're not afraid of being screened. They're not afraid of being asked what they consume in their diet. They're, they're okay with that. And I think when you really tell them, you know, we can preserve your quality of life, you can preserve your independence, they really get it.